speaker, Dr. Marianne Ashford, principal scientist, drug targeting, pharmaceutical development from AstraZeneca Macclesfield, is going to present on progressing the development of ACD2811 nanoparticles. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and, and thank you very much for the um, invitation to give an update of our, our leading nano project, which is, is, is also in, in phase two. So what I'd like to do um, with this, if I can move this. No? Right, we can now sort it out, thank you. Um, so what I was going to do in this talk is give you a little bit of a, a background and, and a general program um, update, but as this is a CMC se session, really focus on the work we, we've done in the briefly in CMC development, so look at the formulation optimization, some of the physical and chemical composition understanding, a little bit about developing a robust manufacturing process, and then something about the sort of the biopharmaceutics and critical quality attributes. So very briefly, I guess, on, on, on um, AZD 2811, it's an aurora kinase um, inhibitor. Um, aurora kinase is a, cr uh, a key enzyme um, in, in spindle assembly and, uh, and checkpoint, and you can clearly see um, when we've got um, inhibition of, of uh, aurora kinase, they fail to, um, the, the, the spindle checks was fa fail to line up, and we, we result in uh, polyploidy and, and, and cell death. So the, the, the journey that we've had here, we started off with LM52, which is a phosphate prodrug of 2811, and that actually achieved proof of, uh, of concept in a, in a phase two trial in, in AML. But that required a, a continuous seven day infusion regimen, which obviously limited it in a number of indications. And the, th there was therapeutic index challenges um, with other um, tumors, particularly in the solid tumor um, um, setting. So we looked at repackaging this I, I, um, a few years ago now in, in the Acurin technology, x Therapeutics. Um, I think most people are, are, are aware um, in this audience, so, you know, the drug is encapsulated within a PLA PEG um, 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 polymer ar around 100 nanometers in size. And this gave us, uh, us two things, a slow release profile where we could get um, a single infusion giving multi-days um, 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 efficacy so we're not get having to give a seven-day infusion, but also it, it improved um, efficacy certainly in all our preclinical models, both in, in solid tumor settings. So I said I didn't want to go too much into to, to, um, the, the detail here because it's the CMC session, but just show you, I guess, as, as two pieces of data and refer you to some others. So one, uh, one um, indication we're looking at is, is, is small cell lung cancer, and we've done a number of models, but, but particularly this PDX model, which clearly, which, which clearly um, shows that, that when we dose the, the nanoparticle, we've got a far more durable response um, than when we had the original compound that went into the clinic, LEM52, and that's at half the dose in intensity. So, you know, far, be far better response at half the dose intensity. Um, and also in, in AML, you know, the models for, for many hemological cancers are quite difficult preclinically, so this is a disseminated model. And we can see, you know, um, after a single dose, we, we had uh, improved me uh, median overall all survival. Um, uh, and no tumor cells um, um, detected in the peripheral blood and, and limited it in, in the bone marrow. So that's all written up in this uh, molecular pharmaceutics paper. So for, for the, other, the other parts of the stage of the program, I can refer you to, to a couple of the key papers and the, the original um, um, science and translational medicine paper, and then papers presented at the AAC CR and mo most re re uh, recently, uh, a couple of months ago, we, we reported on the, on the phase one trial, uh, and that paper also shows that some limited encouraging er early um, efficacy. So moving on now to talk about the, the CM CMC. So mo most of the initial work we did was with dro low drug loading. So we did a, a considerable amount of effort to increase the drug loading, maintaining our release rate uh, and improving process efficiency. So we needed to do this so we could reduce the number of vials for patients, reduce the excipient load and reduce the, the development cost, co uh, cost of goods. 
So using a hydrophobic iron pairing approach, um, we, we've managed to get a drug loading greater than, than 15%, a good encapsulation efficiency, and that's improved significantly, um, and, and again um, ma maintained a, a, a slow release rate, which we needed. So we ended up with, it with, with, with a formulation um, outlined here with 2811, which we've now, with some process improvements, are getting towards 20% drug loading. PLA PEG as, uh, 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 as the, the key uh, rele release medium, we've got the molecular weights there and, and control on those is important, uh, and the palmoic acid really to in increase that drug loading. Uh, and that's all um, presented uh, for phase one and phase two in the frozen suspension, and, and we're, we're going to be investigating whether we can lyophilize that for a commercial product. Uh, and a lot of that work is, is uh, um, summarized a uh, co uh, couple of years ago in, in the uh, JCR paper. So we've done some work to really understand the physical chemical composition. So we, we've both using Raman spectroscopy and, and solid state NMR have been able to show that, that we have got the API and the palmoic acid or amorphous within the, in the particle uh, and in its stoichi uh, stoichiometric hemi um, hemisolt. And we've kind of looked at some of the um, work with this nanoparticle to try and understand what we think the critical quality attributes are for. And this is obviously really important to make sure we understand the efficacy and, and safety and what we can do in terms of, uh, of uh, making sure we control those when we f make, the, make the nanoparticle. So I mentioned a little bit about physical and chemical composition and understanding what, what's in there and in, in, in the formulation. There's also the production process and the uh, a critical material attributes, which are going to lead to identification of the, these key critical quality attributes um, to ensure that we have a robust nanoparticle and, and every patient um, would see the, sa the same particle. So in terms of developing the, the manufacturing process, it, it, it's complex, it, it, it's long. There are a number of, uh, of, of key stages um, illustrated in, the, in, the, in this rich paper, so uh, rich picture. We've got the, the coarse emulsification, the fine emulsification, and then, then, then quenching and, and concentrating the, the particles. A lot more complex uh, than many pro uh, processes, and there's a, there's a poster, uh, a colleague of mine is, is, show, uh, is showing on that poster 109. You know, we've worked really hard to try and understand the various input uh, and output parameters and what the impact at each stage of the, of, of the process. I'm not going to go through this, this table, but it's just really to, to say, you know, that in the, the, the perhaps the four key process um, um, steps, you know, the sort of things that we've tried to look, look at to assure that we have a, a robust process. So in, in the last few minutes, I wanted to, to kind of talk a little bit about biopharmaceutics uh, and the, and the uh, critical quality attributes from a biopharmaceutics perspective. So biopharmaceutics are really, you know, w were defined as anything that affected the, the rate and extent of absorption from a dosage form. So as biopharmaceutical uh, scientists, and this is kind of where I started my career, we were really worried I I about the A in ADME and, and factors of the, the pharmaceutics, the dosage form affected that, that A. So it's all, all about, so, you know, the, the, the free drug being, being, being released um, and the distribution of that free drug and plasma very much being a, a surrogate for efficacy. But when we're working with, with nanomedicines, it, it's a very different picture because we're also lo looking at the, the particle distribution, the free drug distribution and the, and the release from, from that particle. So it is a, a lot more of a, a, a complex picture and all of a sudden we're, we're worried about the D in the ADME um, so it's a little bit of rethinking uh, 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 and, and retraining. So, so what, what we think are I important uh, you know, uh, uh, factors here are obviously the percent drug, drug per, per particle and the number of, of particles, and particularly the size, the opsonization p uh, potential, because that's going to make a difference about what goes to the liver, the, the spleen, or ends up in, in the tumor, uh, and, and the API release rate. And I'm just going to go into to, uh, e each of those and some of the challenges. So I think we've mentioned and mentioned a little bit yesterday in the session particle sizing of nanoparticles. What we, everybody was using, or a lot of us were using, was DLS. We have three batches, I think, under there that we couldn't separate. Um, you know, it's very much a bulk technique, but the nanoparticle tracking analysis w allowed us to, to separate those, and then obviously we need an orthogonal technique, so we're looking at, uh, at mi microscopy. So it's just really a word of caution that we really need to understand what we're measuring and what we're measuring uh, uh, and why from a, a sizing perspective. 
So we've also looked a little bit about the self-layer analysis. Now, there are, you know, um, and now a paper, paper, uh, paper uh, presented by Bertrand and, uh, et al. Um, recently, you know, saying what the density of PEG are on similar particles and what you need to ensure you leave prolonged circulation. And we think we need prolonged circulation to ensure we get, get a decent tumor accumulation or in the HEMES in indication um, 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 to have, a, have a lot, enough circulating to get our efficacy. So we've done some work to try, try and look at this stealth layer characterization. So we've used NMR to, to quantify the PEG both in and uh, um, on the, the nanoparticle. Uh, and then we've tried to, to um, you know, subtract from that work on the PEG on the surface. And then we've used so, some neutron scattering um, to determine the, the, the um, size of the nanoparticle and the surface area and try to work out, uh, out the packing de density. And I think we, we, we've some initial view, and I know there's a lot of debate into what models to, to use, but you know, this sh shows some initial view from the SANS data, again, you know, supporting the fact that we think we have a, an a, amorphous um, you know, um, a drug uh, uh, and palmo acid in, in the particle, um, and giving us, us a view of, of the number of uh, peg chains, you know, it's suggesting that we have, in fact, got a very um, dense layer, which is you know, supported a little bit by the, the cryo EM. So this is certainly very much ongoing work, but I thought it's useful to give a flavor uh, of what we're trying to do. So we do know from a number of different BRIMP batches um, I in the, this PK, K, you know, RAT PK, that we, we have very similar um, and plasma total kinetics and plas plasma clearance. We, we've got a plasma half-life in man, and it, it's prolonged, as you might expect, and it scales quite nicely. And we're trying to, as I say, highlight just here some of the factors um, that, that we think will, it will affect um, the nanoparticle accumulation um, and efficacy. The other thing we, we've looked at is the, the um, um, protein uh, corona. We're just starting to look at the protein uh, corona um, using, using me uh, methods for, for, from the literature. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is, is because we, you know, we, we recognize that the, it's been highlighted in the FDA guideline, and we obviously know the, the protein corona is, is important to understanding the fate and distribution of nanoparticle um, in the body. Um, so th the final thing I guess I just want to come through is, is, is release rate. So we, we showed very early on that we had two very different in, in vitro release rates. That gave us um, very different um, um, uh, biomarker profiles, but that gave us similar efficacy. So we thought from a release rate perspective, it, um, we have a, perhaps have, have some, it, it's not that, uh, it certainly um, in preclinical models, uh, the, um, the release rate doesn't appear to be so critical. But if we look at this in terms of um, um, the bone marrow and the safety trots, they're very wide window of release rates, but we do have very different effects on release rate on the top signal. So we nearly really, nearly really understand the effect of release rate, both on safety and efficacy, um, uh, and those various. And I can see my, my, my time's up. So there's certainly further work in product development to do that. So just in summary, um, just to say that hopefully I'll show you, you know, we have uh, 2811, it has progressed um, into phase two development. We're working really hard to make sure we understand the cr uh, critical quality attributes. And I think we've made significant understanding on some of the key factors that, that could be um, CQAs. And, and further work is ongoing to see if we can actually develop an in, in vitro and vivo um, uh, release uh, uh, correlation. Um, before finishing, I must acknowledge my many, many, many colleagues who've worked on, on this um, within the pharmaceutical sciences uh, community at AstraZeneca, um, the, the, the project teams and external collaborators um, who've supported us with some of the data. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marianne. <laughs> Questions? Uh, Let me ask you a question. So what do you think is um, most helpful for um, focusing research and development teams towards um, a good nanoparticle strategy? Let's say you coming more from the CMC side, what would you advise to put more focus on? I think it's to really think what those critical quality attributes could be and then try and work to try and understand what they are. 
Um, also, I think being aware of the regulatory guidance and support, so groups like the, the NCL and the UNCL who've got a number of protocols for things that they think are important, and obviously we've got the help of the, uh, the uh, new nanomaterials regulatory guidance documents. So that lets us know what the regulators are, are thinking. And there are a number of, of papers published as well. So I think it's trying to, it's changing people away from perhaps the mindset they've had to a slightly different mindset. And I think on the biopharmaceutics, I think, you know, we've always worried about absorption and that distribution piece and thinking about, you know, where the particle's going and what's affecting that as well as the release drug is key. Yeah. Other questions, please? A yeah, quick uh, CMC question on the peg on the surface, which is important for any protein binding and other things. Um, so you're quantifying this by NMR. Is it really quantitative? And is it in saline? Is it just in D2O? That salt concentration does impact what is on the surface. Um, so and I don't know the details of that experiment. I'm, I'm sorry. And I think, you know, I, I wanted to emphasize there that's initial preliminary data, I guess. We're having a go at to get that quantification, both for understanding of 28 and for understanding the, the nano platform itself in, in more, more detail. But I can go back and I will go back and ask those questions. Thank you. Our meeting, um, I, our um, discussion time is over. Um, I want to thank you for the talk and